Hey friends, it's Brittany. Welcome back to my channel. Happy 2022. Uh, by the time this is posted, it's going to be well into 2022, but I say happy 2022 because this is my very first cooking video of 2022 and I have some awesome recipes lined up to share with you guys today. So make sure you stick through the whole video. You don't want to miss out because I have some really good recipes to share. But since it's a new year, I mean, I shouldn't say since it's a new year, but I'm sure many of you, like, you get through the holidays and you've overindulged and you're ready to kind of get back on the bandwagon with healthy eating. And that's where I'm at right now. My husband and I just got back from a long vacation, so we were definitely eating out a lot, and I'm ready to get back with my healthy eating regimen. I won't say like I'm a health nut, but I do try to be mindful of what I'm eating. I try to work out a couple days a week. And I really, in the last year and a half, I feel like I've gotten into a pretty good routine of doing that. I actually joined Beachbody, I think it was about a year and a half ago. And I'm not a coach. I'm not really like affiliated with Beachbody. I just signed up for the workout programs. I don't really use any of the supplement products. But because I am signed up for Beachbody, I get recipes emailed to me occasionally, and a lot of them are really good. So since a lot of people are trying to like refocus their energy on eating healthy, I thought that I would share a couple of Beachbody recipes that I'm going to be making with y'all in case you want to get some ideas for yourself, or maybe you've like looked into Beachbody and you're not sure if it's right for you, but you'd like to get some ideas of the types of foods that you would be eating if you decided to go that route. So with that, I think we're just going to dive in. But if you are new here, my name is Brittany and just a little bit about me and my channel. So I am not new to YouTube, but this year I've decided to focus a lot of my energy into grocery hauls and cooking videos. So I've kind of done like a bunch of stuff on my channel. Um, but my heart right now is just really wanted, wanting to share this content because I am like very, very busy. I work in advertising full time and my job is like really demanding. I work a lot of hours and I'm pretty much like on call most of the time um, because I do work directly with clients. And I know that there's like a ton of people out there that are working. They may be parents, you might be in school and cooking can sometimes seem very, very daunting and very time consuming. And a lot of times you wanna cook, but you need ideas for simple meals that you need to make. So with that, I've really wanted to refocus my time and energy on that subject. So giving you guys ideas of things to cook because I know everyone's lives are so busy. And sometimes when you get home, the last, the last thing you want to think about is cooking like a complicated meal. So I love cooking. I've always loved cooking. It's a passion of mine. And because of that, I just want to be able to share that with you guys in the coming year. And hopefully if you enjoy this type of content, you'll consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you join my YouTube family. And with that, I'm not going to ramble on any longer because I already feel like this intro is way too long. So let's get into my beach body meals for this week that I'm making. Before we get into cooking, I wanted to give one more disclaimer that if you have zero interest in beach body, but you do enjoy cooking videos, um, I will have plenty of content in the upcoming year that is not beach body related. It just so happens that this first video is beach body recipes because that's just what I feel feel like making this week. So I hope you'll stick around. Today's first recipe that I'm going to be sharing is a beach body slow cooker pork tacos with pineapple salsa. It sounds amazing and the recipe is actually super, super simple, which is amazing because I'm not going to have to spend a lot of time on it. It uses minimal ingredients and you literally dump it in the slow cooker and the slow cooker does all the work for you. And those are the type of recipes that I love because I don't have to spend a lot of time on it. I don't really have to worry about it. I can like continue with my day. And by the time I'm done with work, dinner will be cooked. So it's gonna be really good. I'm excited to try this one and share the final results with you guys. So with that, let's get to cooking. For this recipe, these are the ingredients that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a pork tenderloin or a pork roast, 
The point is you just need some type of lean pork. This is a sirloin roast, so this will work. This is what my store had. This is actually about two pounds. You only need a pound, but we're just gonna make a little extra and have leftovers. You're also going to need corn tortillas, and you're gonna need ingredients for your salsa, which are gonna be cumin, lime juice, and pineapple. Now the recipe calls for fresh pineapple, but I opted for crushed pineapple because it was cheaper, it's already chopped up, and I can use the leftovers for yogurt parfaits. So just being a little resourceful there, um, but fresh pineapple is probably a little healthier. But I did make sure when I was getting the canned pineapple that I opted for the one that's in 100% pineapple juice and not the heavy syrup. So this is a little healthier than some um, canned fruit is. And then I also have salsa verde. That's going to go on top of the pork while it cooks in the slow cooker. And then this is optional. You can add jalapenos. I am going to add jalapenos because we do like our taco spicy. And then this is really just optional. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of taco seasoning to the pork because I want to make sure it does have a lot of flavor. The salsa verde, it's mild, so I'm not really sure how much flavor that's going to add. So if you have taco seasoning on hand, if you want to add that, you can go ahead and add that in. We've got our pork roast in the crock pot, and I just took a cup and a half of the salsa verde. Since I'm using the jalapenos, the recipe calls for seven ounces. That seems like a lot to me, so I just am using about this much of the jar and it was probably about 10 to 12 jalapeno slices i did take some of the juice and poured in the juice to the salsa verde mixture because i thought that the vinegar and the salt from the brine would help tenderize the pork and just add extra flavor so what i did is i literally just put the the jalapenos and the brine mixed in with a salsa verde in here and I'm just gonna pour that all over top of the pork roast but before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my taco seasoning I'm just going to eyeball it but I'm gonna use about a tablespoon and I'm just gonna put it right on top of the pork roast and this is a homemade seasoning I like to make my taco seasoning homemade because there's a lot when you buy the store-bought, like I definitely buy it occasionally, but there's a lot more preservatives in the store-bought taco seasoning. And I honestly, now that I've had homemade, I feel like the packets taste processed to me. So there's a better flavor in the homemade version. I can share that in a future video if you guys are interested. It's super easy to make. And then we're just gonna pour the salsa verde mixture over top. And it already smells super good. And the thing with the jalapenos is you can always add spice later, but you can't take it back. So we're just going to err on the, state, the side of caution with that. Here is the roast. It's all ready to go. We're going to put the lid on. So the recipe calls for you to cook it on high for three to four hours. It's really in the morning here, so I'm just going to cook it all day on low. I'm going to put it on the eight hour setting and then I'll check it and see where we're at. But it honestly already smells really good and it hasn't even started cooking. So I'm really excited to see how it turns out tonight and I'll check in with you guys later. All right, friends, it's 630. I just wrapped up work and the pork is done. So we're going to shred it and we're going to see how tender it is. It smells delicious. The dog is on alert because he smells it as well. So let's do this. It's not as tender as I would have hoped it would be, um, but it's not super tough either. It may just take a little bit of work. So I'm going to speed through this for you guys. My elbows literally hurt from shredding. That definitely didn't fall apart as much as I would have liked it to, but it's shredded. It probably took me about like seven minutes to shred it. I'm literally stretching, you see me? <laughs> My
my arms are so sore. That could be from the workout I did today too. But I'm gonna give this a taste test and let you guys know how it is. It is definitely shredded and here's the thing. I could have shredded it into like bigger chunks and it wouldn't have taken it me as long, but I really wanted it to be in um, really tiny shreds because I wanted it to soak up all the sauce. So let's do a taste test and then I'm gonna make the pineapple salsa. Hmm. You know what? There's a lot more flavor in there than I expected there to be. Even though there wasn't a ton of seasonings that went into it. There's definitely a bit of an after kick from the jalapeno. And I don't think I had a jalapeno directly on my fork when I took a bite. So I definitely think having the juice in there um, with it made it pretty spicy. Glad I didn't put a ton of jalapenos in it because if we want extra spice, we can just put more jalapenos on it. I will say, I wish it was a little more tender. It's not like tough, but you definitely got to chew. <laughs> if you're a close friend of mine, you know how I feel about chewing. Sometimes I won't even be full, but I'll be just tired of chewing. So I'll stop eating. I know it's ridiculous um if you don't like spicy food you could totally substitute a can of green chilies instead of jalapenos but i think the jalapenos add a lot of really good flavor so we're making our salsa i went ahead and we have our pineapple in this bowl i am glad i went with the crushed canned pineapple because that was just super convenient it's like chop perfectly for salsa. The recipe calls for about a half a cup. This is probably a little more than a half a cup. We're probably not going to use all of this tonight, so we'll just use the leftovers tomorrow. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a quarter teaspoon of cumin to the pineapple. So we have our cumin here. And then I have cut up some red onion that I'm going to add in as well. I tried to dice it up as finely as possible. I'm really not that great at dicing um, onions. And then I have a lime. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. A little trick with citrus, if you're gonna be using it for squeezing, is to roll it before you cut it because it releases the juices and it just makes it easier when you're squeezing it into the salsa. So it calls for about two tablespoons, which I imagine would be about half of a lime. And you also can score the inside of the lime that also helps relieve, release the juices. So we're gonna go ahead and squeeze that in here. Oh, it smells so good. Lastly, this is not in the recipe, but I'm going to add a little bit of a, a pinch of salt just because we have a lot of sweetness going on in this pineapple salsa. And then we're just going to stir it up. Try to get that cumin all incorporated in there. And now we just have to assemble our tacos. Now I do feel like these corn tortillas are 100% going to disintegrate because <laughs> that's what corn tortillas do. But I think they're going to taste really nice with the pork. We're going to add some salsa on top. You know what would be so pretty on top of this is some green cilantro just to add some color. But oh, also I wanted to mention the onion. Technically, the recipe called for shallots, but I had a red onion I wanted to use up, so I just opted to use that instead. And then I'm just going to add a little squeeze of lime just to finish off the dish. And of course, you could top these like with whatever you want, like cheese or sour cream. But the beach body recipe does not call for that because that would add a lot of extra calories. This is my husband, Derek. He's going to be our official taste tester for this recipe. So what do I do? I feel like we this is deja vu. We've definitely done this bit in another video. <laughs> what? <laughs> Good. You didn't even get the, like, tortilla. I think corn tortilla is fun. All right, I'll do a taste test for you guys and let know what I think. You failed as a taste tester. Oh boy. 
<laughs> Don't use that as a we napkin. Know. Are you kidding me? I literally just hung that up. It's a clean towel. OMG. Is anyone else's husband like this? <laughs> Do we sit at the table tonight? We real adults? <laughs> he says no. Part of my pantry back there. Okay. Here we go. There's no graceful way to do that. It's really good. Um, <coughs> if I made it again, I would add more jalapenos. I would add a little more seasoning. And I'm gonna add Cholula on this when I eat it. And then it's gonna be perfect, but I like it. It's really easy. I kinda wish the pork was a little more tender. Um, I almost wonder if I cooked it at a higher temperature like the recipe said, but for like three or four hours, if that would have been better. The only thing is my pork was like two pounds of pork and the recipe was like one pound. Um, it was the right cut though. I looked at the recipe again and it said like a pork loin and my roast was a pork sirloin. So overall, I give it. Uh, oh my god, my taco literally just fell apart. I would give it like... <laughs> I would give it like a, a 6 out of 10. That's my rating. Very easy. I think it gets the job done. And it's healthy, so... I'm gonna go put another taco together that's not falling apart. I just don't subscribe from your <laughs> channel. This video sucks. Good evening, friends. So it is Sunday evening. It's like 6.15, and I am doing some meal prep for the week. Pardon my appearance. I feel like I look a little crazy, but it's been a super busy Sunday. We've just been like catching up on a ton of stuff in the house, and meal prepping is like one of my last things on my Sunday to-do list. And I'm so excited about it because then we're going to just relax for the rest of the night. Luckily, this recipe is super, super simple. So it's a beach body chicken, black bean, arugula salad. And I'm really craving salads this week. I just feel like my body like needs it. Um, since it's the new year as many like we're all trying to just eat healthier and generally I feel like we do eat pretty healthy but coming off a of vacation my body needs some salads <laughs> like my body needs some greens I need some veggies in my life so this week is definitely like we're hitting the ground running prepping all the healthy foods I just cut up some strawberries like I'm getting all situated for the week because I know the reality is it's gonna be busy at work and anything you can do ahead of time to make eating easier and making it convenient to eat healthy, you got to do the work ahead of time. That's just how it works. So the nice thing is with this recipe, it is literally so simple. I'm going to show you guys the ingredients. I mean, I'm doing like a little more work than you even have to do. So let me just cut to the chase. Let me show you the ingredients and we'll start prepping this. So here's all of our ingredients. Again, very, very simple. I have some Haas avocados, and then I have the arugula, obviously. I have a can of black beans that I'm going to rinse and drain. And then I have some cherry tomatoes. And then I did see this at Lidl today and picked this up. This is some chili lime seasoning. So I'm gonna use this to season my chicken. I thought it would be really appropriate for this kind of like southwestern salad. Never tried this before, so we'll see how this is. Of course, you can use whatever seasoning you want for your chicken. And then I have some thin sliced chicken breast. Now, I'm making fresh chicken. I'm just gonna cook it in a skillet on the stove. However, if you wanna make your life even more easier, you can get the pre-cooked chicken um, in like the deli section. Like I know Purdue makes the, the pre-cooked grilled chicken that you can get for salads and stuff. So if you want to make your life easier, you can do that. 
I'm not like a huge fan of most pre-cooked chickens. I think they taste kind of processed, so I'm gonna make my own freshly cooked chicken, but you do you. <laughs> When, when times are tough and you're you're low on time, sometimes you gotta go with the pre-cooked chicken. So I'm gonna start prepping this. I'm gonna start by rinsing my black beans, slicing my tomatoes. And then what I'm gonna do is, instead of like pre-assembling the salads, which you could do if you're like going into an office setting, I'm actually just going to kind of like separate my ingredients. And since I work from home, I will just build my salads as I need them. So let's get cooking. We're on a journey Looking back on the things that we've taken for granted But feels like we're learning To be better without what's been holding us back now Let's move closer to a new history Find out what we can be together Take my hand and we will conquer the world This is our final chance Hello friends, so it's the day after I prepped my chicken, black bean, arugula salads and I'm about to like assemble one for my lunch. So I thought I would share that with you. Before I do that, I wanted to let you guys know about this uh, chili lime seasoning from Lidl. It tastes delicious. I tasted the chicken last night after it was cooked. It was really good and I do enjoy the seasoning. The only thing is... The seasoning was so stuck together that I had to like chisel it out of the container with a knife. I kind of wish I got my initial reaction when I was trying to like shake it out on the chicken and ended up having to chis chisel it out, but my camera was like not shot at an angle where I was in the shot. Um, so I don't know if I can recommend this because it's honestly kind of a pain because I don't know it's just it's all stuck together and it's definitely fresh like the use by date is I think it's April 27th oh sorry that's my dishwasher it's done um real life people um but yeah it's expiring in 2024 so it's definitely good what I think it is it's got like citric it has citric acid like lime juice in it and I think that's what ma makes it stick together so the other part of this too is it definitely sticks to your pan like a lot and I kind of like goofed last night because so much stuff was stuck to the bottom of the pan I was like oh let me just put the skillet on the stove with some water in it and then let it like boil off so that when I like clean the pan tomorrow it's not as bad guys I'm so dumb and I literally left the pan on the stove went to the couch to watch a tv show with Derek and completely forgot about it <laughs> In our house, I smelled like burning and we had a space heater on. I was like, oh, is the space heater like burning? And then Derek's like, no, I don't think it's coming from the space heater. And he walks into the kitchen and he's like, how long has this pan been on the stove? <laughs> I completely forgot about it. The kitchen was filled with smoke. My pan was like real scorched. I think I salvaged it. Like I let it soak overnight. I put some boiling water in it for my tea kettle. Let it soak, clean it to this morning scrubbed it down. I put it in the top rack of my dishwasher, which just finished. So I'm going to check out the pan and see how it is. But it was kind of funny because I honestly, most times I don't really goof that bad in the kitchen, but I did so much yesterday in our house that I think I was just like so exhausted that I literally like completely forgot about it. So again, real life, it happens. We're humans. So I'm going to get my stuff out of the fridge so we can make salads. I'm really hungry. It's almost two o'clock. It's been a, quite a busy work day. So let's eat. And then I'm going to put some ranch dressing on it. You can put whatever dressing you want to 
Um, another alternative to dressing that would be really nice on the salad is lime juice, which I do have, but I'm just going to do ranch today because I have some leftover that I made this weekend when my parents came over for dinner. And obviously not going to do a ton because that defeats the purpose of eating a salad. But your girl loves salad dressing. But again, I'm trying to really rein it in. And I think that's a good amount. And then, so as you remember, this salad actually calls for avocado. But my avocados aren't ripe yet. So what I'm going to use in lieu of avocado for now are these um, Asiago and Pepper Jack cheese wisps which are low carb and I thought it would pair nicely on the salad since it is like a southwestern type salad. And just do a couple of those and I'll add a nice little crunch. I figured we'd do a little taste test before I head back upstairs to my office <laughs> and now Oreo is eating his lunch so don't mind his chewing. So I'm gonna try to grab a bite with like every little ingredient which I feel like sometimes is tough with salads. But here we go. Cheers. Yes. Oh, this is really good. Okay. You know what? That salad was super simple. And in the grand scheme of things, it probably doesn't sound like the most exciting salad. But there's something about it that's just so good. And maybe that really is just the simplicity and the flavors you get and the textures from all the different ingredients. But the chicken is like cooked perfectly, like it's very juicy. And the chili lime seasoning is really delicious on it and it pairs nicely with the flavors of the other ingredients. So if you, I don't know, maybe it's just that type of seasoning that's a struggle with the stickiness and like the seasoning not coming out of the container. Um, but I'm sure you could find like another type of southwestern seasoning that would pair nicely also But it does pair really nicely with these ingredients um, The cheese wisps are actually like a Game changer I feel like like I almost feel like it wouldn't be as good without them because the crunch is so nice But the salad itself is like very mild, right? There's not like a lot of spicy flavors in it but the the wisps add that little bit of a bite like the crunch and the spiciness that goes really nicely with like the beans because the beans you know can kind of be bland on their own so that's pretty good I mean it's just a salad but that's really delicious if you're looking to change up your salad game if you're getting bored with the salad you're eating this is a really nice way to change change things up so I would recommend like that's probably like an 8 out of 10 for me all right, we are here for another healthy beach body recipe and I'm super hungry. So it's actually my lunch break on Monday and yesterday I was supposed to meal prep this but I didn't get to it because it was a pretty busy day. So we're gonna do it today which will be nice because I'll get to eat it hot and fresh and I'm gonna bring Derek a serving of this as well. So we're gonna have kind of a, a fancy Monday lunch and then we'll probably have leftovers to eat throughout the rest of the week. So this recipe is Beachbody Greek Chicken Pitas, which sounds amazing, and I love Greek-inspired food, so it should be really good. It's got all my favorite things, cucumbers, tomato, feta cheese. I love feta cheese, so anything with feta, and I'm completely sold. This recipe is actually super simple, and I already have some of the ingredients chopped up. I chopped up a couple days ago for just salads, and we still have leftovers, so it's going to be super quick and simple. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get started on a Greek yogurt sauce, which actually isn't in the recipe, but I have Greek yogurt on hand. So I figured that would pair nicely with this recipe. So what I'm going to do is since it's kind of like a hodgepodge of recipes in the description below, I'll include the details for you guys to read through. So let's get started. For the Greek yogurt sauce, I'm totally kind of just winging this and making this up. I have this whole container of plain Greek yogurt. So just giving it a stir and then I'm going to add it into the small dish where I'm going to combine all my ingredients. I am going to make a good amount of this just because I'm going to be prepping a bunch of chicken so we're probably going to eat this for lunches the whole week. Plus I need to use this yogurt up. I don't know about you guys but I used to not like plain yogurt but honestly just recently I've gotten 
more into it. I think I talked about this in a video I just filmed. We'll do about that much for now. Then I'm going to add some garlic powder. Hopefully this is good. Maybe I won't go too crazy with the garlic powder, but I'm just thinking about when you have tzatziki sauce, you know, um, and it has garlic in it. So just a little bit of garlic powder and we'll see how that tastes and I can always add more. It may be totally off and so I'm not gonna go too crazy with that. Then we're gonna add some dillweed. This would be really amazing with fresh dill, but I don't have that. So we're just gonna use this but dill is just that classic Greek flavor. And I'm gonna go pretty heavy with the dill weed. And then I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. And the reason I'm making this first before I cook the chicken is because I want it to be able to kind of sit in the fridge for a little bit. So all the flavors kind of marinate together. I'm gonna add a little more dill. Okay. And then we're going to do some freshly ground pepper. The only ingredient I don't have that I wish I had for these pita pockets is red onion. Um, the onions just didn't look great at the store this week, so I skipped out. But um, it will be fine without it. And I'm going to do a little bit of this pepper as well. This is just a little more fine than the pepper grounds. And finally, I'm gonna add some lemon juice. And this is one of those things I conveniently just had these ingredients on hand. So I figured I might as well use up, you know? some of my stuff and honestly this too if you add in enough lemon juice this would totally be great as a salad dressing for the other ingredients i'm using a whole wheat flax and oat brand pita bread that i picked up from aldi this is my first time trying it so hopefully it's good i also have some cucumbers and tomatoes and again red onion would be really good with this i've got feta cheese and then if you're following beach body just use it sparingly and then i also have some banana peppers, and I have some Kalamata olives. So these aren't in the beach body recipe, but again, these are just added ingredients you can use on them. And we got our chicken I'm about to chop up. We got a schnauzer who's looking for treats. Also, did you, what is this on the ground? Did you carry a burr in? What is this? <laughs> he was on the deck plane, so. Where'd you find that, bud? Dancing closely together and staying forever young. What about you and I then? Can we two find a way to align with each other? Let's move closer to a new history. Find out what we can be together. Mm -hmm. Take my hand and we will conquer the world. This is our final chance. That was so good. Derek liked it. I liked it. I definitely will be making those again. I just think if you're in a rut with your lunches, that's such a nice thing to make just to change it up. It's still easy. It's not like it takes a ton of work. You could cook way more chicken than I did and feed way more people or have it for more days. The seasonings I used on the chicken, the oregano salt pepper, perfect. The lemon juice, nice added touch. The yogurt sauce was delicious. I think that definitely kind of like upped the recipe. So I definitely would recommend making the yogurt sauce with it. But again, if you're following Beachbody, just make sure if you're doing like the portion fix, you measure out the correct amount for the Greek yogurt and the feta. Just make sure you're all squared away. But that was good. I think of the recipes that I made this 
for this video i think this pita recipe was my favorite and i also what's nice about it is it definitely is a great lunch but it would make a delicious dinner too i think this wraps up the video i hope that you guys enjoyed seeing these recipes if you are doing beach body i hope it helps your helps you out and if you're not doing beach body i hope you still found some value in these recipes honestly they're just really good healthy recipes even if you're not doing beach body i'm sure that you would love them because i really enjoyed them if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel so much. And if you like this video, I hope you'll subscribe and do my YouTube family. On my channel, I do lots of cooking content. So I have a lot more videos planned coming up where I'll be sharing more recipes. So make sure you're in the loop so you don't miss out on any of that fun stuff. And if you made it all the way to the end, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.